Hi, I'm Helene Williams and I teach here at the Information School and I am a real life librarian and for years uh, worked in collection development and reference and have done story times and all, all kinds of things and so I've dealt with banned books for decades and I'm going to read you a couple of paragraphs from one of my favorite banned books which is called The Higher Power of Lucky by Susan Patron. Lucky Trimble crouched in a wedge of shade behind the dumpster her ear near a hole in the paint chipped wall of hard pans, found object, wind chime museum, and visitor center, she listened as short Sammy told the story of how he hit rock bottom, how he quit drinking and found his higher power. Short Sammy's story, of all the rock bottom stories Lucky had heard at 12 step anonymous meetings, alcoholics, gamblers, smokers, and overeaters, was still her favorite. Sammy told of the day when he had drunk half a gallon of rum listening to Johnny Cash all morning in his parked 62 Cadillac, then fallen out of the car when he saw a rattlesnake on the passenger seat biting his dog Roy on the scrotum. This book is really about Lucky, a young woman who has lost her mother and her voyage of recovery from that, but that word scrotum is what got this book in trouble. Uh, it's the incident of a rattlesnake biting a dog on his scrotum is totally incidental, but libraries ended up banning this book, patrons complained. What the big issue for me as a teacher is, is that librarians didn't buy this because they had heard about this word in this children's book and they were afraid people were complaining. So there's several layers of banning going on here. There's self-censorship as well as the greater issue of intellectual freedom. And letting students read what they want to read and what they need to read and focusing on something that totally isn't the point in a book. So this is why it's one of my favorite examples of a book that should not have been banned. Thank you.